Hi guys, my name is Barro Dante and welcome back to Overpain. So we're continuing our Overpain month and today's patient is Jinx Scream. And this is their head of the character. Is this the beast from the Beauty and the Beast? Nah, he looks pretty different from that. Is this the original character? I'm not sure. Well, maybe it's an alternative design of the beast. Anyway, hey Boro, this is my second attempt in lineless art. Cool. It's just a practice, so it isn't fully completed, as you can see. Just wondering if you can jazz him up a bit or teach me something. Yeah, let's go ahead and do just that. All right, let's put him like this right away. So one thing I would say right away, whenever you're presenting any work, even if it's like an unfinished sketch like this, you have to still think about what the sketch still looks like for the viewer who would see this for the first time. Right now it looks very raw in a way that is just like, well, you know, everywhere you would just say, well, it's unfinished. You know, number one thing is that the background is too dark. I would make it brighter, at least like around the head, maybe somewhere to highlight the silhouette of the character. But again, this is a minor thing. But generally, this is what is very interesting about like professional artists who sometimes you can like follow them on Instagram or something and they post like these little sketches like unfinished works, just thoughts. And they all just look awesome anyway, even though they're just quick little doodles or something. That's because they know what they're doing. They make a quick work, but they make sure that it looks super fancy anyway, even though there's not a lot of work put into it. They always choose just the right color of the background, color of the lines of this is just a line sketch, and so on and so forth. Like, everything matters, even if it's unfinished work. If you are ready to share it somewhere, make sure that it looks impressive, even on that stage that it's in. So yeah, I'm gonna make the background lighter, obviously, when we start actually painting. But what else? Yeah, really feels like the whole surrounding should be brighter because I really want to add a bit more light to the guy. Right now he really looks flat. Let's make this video mostly about how to render hair, right? Because this guy is like 90% hair. So in this case we really need to make sure that we think about the hair not as individual hairs but as the hair mass. So first of all we have to simplify the whole mass for us to think about it as like simple simpler shapes that would work as simple objects with the lighting. So let's say here's our head, then we have this kind of volume going upwards, kind of like this. This is not exactly a sharp edge, but just to specify a strong change in angle, I just made a little line there. So if he goes like here, I would probably make it a bit bigger right here to make the head a bit bigger in the back. So with these masses, I feel like in here we have this wave of sorts and here we have this kind of convex shape that a little bit deviates into a concave shape right here. And same in here, probably it would go like if this would be a three dimensional model, you know, it would be like this kind of stuff. And here probably something something and same here, it would go this way. This is really what you have to think about when you paint anything or draw anything. You have to think about the objects as a three-dimensional, like fully three-dimensional objects or masses of objects, like with hair, for example. So in here we have a little bit of the symmetry fix, probably would go like this. The forehead would go a bit backwards like this. And then we have this stuff going on like this. Some kind of stuff going on in here as well. This is a very interesting curl. I see it kind of goes like this, right? So again, no actually straight lines. Everything is kind of roundy. This is a basic logic of the design of this character. Everything is kind of round and smoothy. Smooth. This going on, it's really facing away probably and facing a whole lot in here away. So it's like completely facing away. A very strong foreshortening on this one, on this horn. And then there are these giant manly beasty kind of shoulders. They're a bit stronger, kind of like a mountain shoulders, mountain trapezius. And even eyebrows, these are really big and massive eyebrows. So I would go the same way here with analyzing the shape.
a little bit extra volume detail for the eyelids at the bottom. At the top we have a very heavy eyebrows, they cover up the eyelid detail, so we are not gonna see a lot of that at the top. So should straighten this up probably like this. Also about this uh, thing right here, it really doesn't feel like it's following any geometry. I know this is kind of a stylish thing to have just one little thing showing up from under the lip in some characters. I guess we can keep it this way for just, you know, maintaining this kind of style, but generally what kind of anatomy of the skull would this thing have? Why doesn't the second thing show up and everything? I guess I'm going too much into detail details here because really this is just a stylish thing. You can see this kind of fang showing up in a lot of cartoons and anime. A lot of characters have just one fang showing up. Maybe I would fix a little bit the, the shape of the lips because he looks a bit too like um, like he was growing up with grandma. Mm. But I, I guess it's not a problem, <laughs> just a personal preference to change a little bit the character of the character, I guess, or something like that. So I guess this guy wouldn't have his chest pointing forward too much, because he seems like he's, uh, he's feeling down a bit. So let's not make the plane of the chest going too much like this, you know? So he would be all like this, but more like going straight downwards, because he mostly pushing out his back, so he's going going like this. So generally that's the kind of shape. Again, I'm not really paying attention to anatomy here or anything like that. I'm just working on general shapes, on what we actually look at in the end, you know? So this is what we probably have. This looks like some kind of CSI Miami analysis, and hence the character. Never actually seen a single episode of CSI or anything like that. But yeah, thinking about that, the next thing we should think about is, of course, where the light is. Because obviously, I can see how Jinx really didn't think about where the lighting is. And this is really like a hard thing to avoid when you start rendering actual colors. Because any colors you see on an object is basically the light reflected from the surface of an object. So if you think about the colors, you inevitably think about the light so we have to think about where this light is coming from and in here I really can't tell it's like absolutely lit evenly from all the sides and doesn't even have like um, occlusion shadows like somewhere behind in all those uh, little areas where hair masses are close to each other there should be darkening right under the hooves a little bit of shadow so that's even if we don't think about the direction of the light if this is a perfect evenly lit situation this this is at least the thing we would do, number one. And number two, we would also make all the masses a bit darker. I'll keep this on so you guys would know what I'm thinking about when I add shadows. All the planes that are facing downwards should be darker than the ones that are facing forward. That's always a thing I keep repeating. Really important. Again, it, it's um, not an absolute rule. In some situations, very specific ones, this wouldn't work this way. For instance, if it's some demonic lighting that is light is hitting the character from the bottom, everything would work the opposite way. Everything that's facing upwards would go darker than something that's facing downwards. But generally, whenever we have any kind of lighting, even the one that I'm having right now, you see the bottom side of the palm is darker than the upper one, because most of the lights in the world, including the sunlight and the skylight and the moonlight, everything is somewhat on the top. It's higher than we are. So when we're rendering the character, the character should be darker at the bottom of all of its details than it is at the top of those details. So literally thinking down darker, up brighter, pretty simple. So again, this is still we're not even thinking about the direction of the light. This is a basic cloudy day situation where everything is lit the same way from all the sides. A really great, super simple, like the simplest possible version of lighting. When you just do dark at the bottom, light at the top, and darker whenever objects get too close to each other, you know? Here the beard is really close to the mass of the torso, so it's also gonna have very little light going in between those two surfaces, so it's getting darker. So yeah, and let's add maybe a light, right? Um, let's say it's going to be 
from this side like this and I like this side usually because uh, why am I choosing such a side you see it's like going from the back because I'm like adding extra light and the character is already pretty much lit normally like we can see this beast pretty well so if we add a light it would make the character overexposed like it would make it too bright and right now I want to add more light so any detail from this light that I will be adding should be even brighter than what the character already is and that's why I will make this light not the main light so it will be covering only a small portion of the character so I'm gonna make it brighter a bit more saturated maybe but not necessarily and closer so we're actually having like a very warm like a yellow light so a bit closer to yellow just to make that uh, feeling of the fact that that light is a bit warmer than the rest of the lighting on this character so I'll be doing that and same thing on the hair brighter saturated yellow yellow were Okay, so this horn would probably cast a shadow like this on the hair. That means that like it, it will be hitting like this. This area is gonna be blocked from this light. So I avoid adding this bright color in this spot. No specific, just uh, as much as you can comprehend the way the geometry goes there. You just add that little shadow. You'll get better at guessing how it will look more realistic every time you practice this so whatever so yeah I think this kind of uh, contour lighting here will add some dramatic effect to the mood of this guy he seems to be kind of down so let's make the lighting work with him as well I'll add the thing a bit later don't worry so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and add some of these lighting details all over this character and then when I'll switch to a little bit more of detail we'll talk about how to move on with converting these round masses of hair into actually hair like how to make it look like a hair and not just round shapes so yeah let's start rendering Okay, so this is what we have for now. Let's remove this little thing. So I did work through the shapes, the values everywhere. I fixed a little bit this side of the hair to make it just like this one with this curl and with this kind of action, which is, this is what I interpreted this kind of shape like, because I'm not sure how else would this infinite shape of hair go. I guess this is what it means in a way, at least to a certain extent. But yeah, this is what we got and right here I already started turning it into hair. But basically it was just a shape like this before. And then I just went ahead and uh, like basically everywhere we just introduced some separate hair strings like this and that's it that's the only difference from simplified rounded shapes of hair and the actual realistic looking hair you just have this mass and then you just add separated hairs a little bit here and there to show the direction of that hair and just to show the the texture that this is the hair it's not one solid object it breaks apart here and there into separate hairs I'm like creating a certain diffusion of all the values that I defined with some hairs like making a displacement of that lighting like at the highlight the brightest part was only here but I'm spreading it a little bit everywhere because that's what hairs do they catch the light and they spread the values a little bit all over the place but not too much just you see I'm grabbing the color and next to that color I'm adding extra little details of hairs And the last thing, maybe we want to add some rare highlights like this to show that this is actually hair that has certain amount of reflectivity to it. But remember to only put it where it really like has a huge reason to be there. Like I'm pretty sure like in here it would make sense to be probably in here as well, definitely. To make a highlight generally like a rule of thumb is just to grab the color of the place where you want to add the highlight, make it brighter and a bit paler. Like you're adding white a little bit basically. So that's the color and it looks just like the actual highlight. 
If you add a highlight and it just doesn't look right, trust me, it's best to just remove it and forget about that place. It will make the picture look better if you just avoid that place adding highlight, because there is a good chance it just shouldn't be there. I'm thinking, what if I make the whole picture a bit brighter? Yeah, like this. Feels a bit better. Became a bit more red, but I kind of like it. Oh yeah, the fang. Let's add one. Man, you so sad. Why are you so sad? A little highlights on the skin as well. But let's also spread it a little bit with like hairs. I assume the beast doesn't really have anything non-hairy at all. Even his actual face is still covered with very short hair. I mean, obviously, right? <laughs> so we basically grab the same highlights and just spread them around a little bit. So yeah, this is it. Tell me guys what you think about the result. And thank you, Jinx, for your submission. This is uh, a fun little... Is it beast? Tell me if this is a beast. Uh, this is killing me. If this is the beast. Let's add a bit stronger shadow from the fang because if it's sticking out it should at least spread the lips a little bit apart and that will result in a stronger shadow over it there yeah there we go so yeah worked a bit on the eyes added highlights they work pretty well this really bright highlight from that bright light source is only on this eyeball this one can't have that and these smaller highlights are just from something around that is also creating the main ambient light and adding these highlights to the eyes remember to not make them too big otherwise they look like they're not highlights but something else you know yeah so worked on the lips made them much better bigger and the eyes are just so sad oh my god also i added a little bit like uh, a hint on the torso with just a black cloth why not looks pretty legit and you see even though it's not finished just random strokes these strokes are very far from random i made sure that they look kind of cool and dynamic and make the this quick unfinished sketch you know without the rest of the body at the bottom it still looks like it's finished it's just right the way it is this way it wasn't just uh, some random strokes i decided to keep them this way i actually was actively trying to make them look satisfying in a way so yeah I think this worked out pretty well the hair looks pretty fluffy and of course if you have more time to work on the piece you add a lot more of tiny hairs and think it through how exactly it goes everywhere it works out really well you can paint any kind of hair with just thinking through main shapes first and then adding these little strings of hair to show the actual texture of the mess that this is actual hairs so yeah you'll be all good doing just that and I thank you for watching if you did. I guess you did if you're here. Love a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Don't be sad. Why are you so sad? Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my god. I'm going to church right now.